All right, you guys, so finally here um, with the review for the Bodega uh, 38 quart cooler, also known as, also known as uh, 36 liters. But uh, I've been using this cooler for about a month or so. I actually took it to New York um, to help some family out. Um, and to power the cooler with, I actually used my EcoFlow River 2 power station and I used this Excitus power bank to recharge the power station with so I can get more capacity out of it. Um, and it was able to last about like four and a half hours. My full drive was about like five and a half hours, but everything was kept insulated um, inside the uh, cooler. Um, and I didn't want to take something big because, because I didn't have enough space in the car. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, um, this Bodega cooler has served me very well um, over the past month. It's performed um, pretty well. I mean, there are no complaints on my side. Um, you know, for what it is, for what it offers, it performed well. Um, and so just taking a look at what's included in the box, um, you do get this uh, cigarette lighter um, adapter to power the cooler. You get the manual and also you get, of course, the uh, AC um, charging, charging brick, um, which is my preferred method to power the cooler with. Um, because, you know, you can uh, plug in the cooler into your uh, cigarette lighter port in your car. But uh, in my opinion, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that personally for, for me um, because... Uh, because that can drain because I can drain power from your uh, car battery um, so my recommendation would be to probably have a power station um, to power the cooler um, while you're driving that's just my opinion uh, of course I know not everybody has a power station that that's extra money to spend however the option is there to power this cooler directly from your car um, so yeah and so when it comes to the size of this uh, bodega cooler it does have a 28 by 14 by 14 inch form factor and it weighs about 30 pounds so um uh size wise it's a decent size weight wise it's a bit heavy but it's manageable um and most of the time you're not going to be uh picking it up either it does have these wheels um that i've been using um quite heavily as you can see they're uh, a little bit worn a little bit dirty and so you also get this um handle right over here to the side that does make uh, moving it around a lot easier. So you can really put those wheels to use just like that, as you can see. So it's just like a um, suitcase, I suppose you could say. And it just folds in just like that over to the side. And uh, I'm gonna get to testing out this cooler in just a second, but let me just do a quick look around for you guys to show you, um, you know, what it, what it has. And so this is the uh, handle right over here. Well, this isn't really the handle. This is like the, um, the latch you just gotta go up on that and it opens up if it's a little dirty inside sorry about that you know once again i have been using it for the past month <laughs> and so over to the left side is where you have your fridge section <laughs> right right there it says fridge over to the right is the freezer section you get this um divider that divides the fridge from the freezer and you're actually able to and this features a you know dual zone type of climate control where you can actually um change the temperature for the fridge and the freezer i'm going to be showing that right over here on this panel um and you know the, it comes with this as well this, I, this is not mine this came with the uh, cooler and you can actually remove this and you can remove the divider and so when you remove the divider basically the entire thing becomes the uh, freezer section i believe um and, and it actually turns it off the fridge section on the panel right over there i'm going to be showing that in just a second and uh, just taking a look inside, it also has a drain hole. So you can actually, I think, take this out. I haven't used this yet, actually, <laughs> um, but I did um, clean it. Um, it might be a little dirty, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, it just comes right off just like that. Water drains out um, from the bottom. And once it's done draining, you can just pop it back in. Yeah, I got to clean that. My bad. But um, <laughs> and also right over here, no, don't know if you can see it or not. Um, yeah, right, man, let me move myself a little bit, okay, and so yeah, right over here is the LED light, and yeah, this thing even has LED light, and so I'm just going to put back the divider right over here, just like that, and I'm just going to put back the, uh, the caddy, and so in terms of um, what you can do with the 38-quart uh, um, dimensions on the inside it is a uh, 19 and 19 uh, quart dimensions for the fridge and the freezer um, right over here I got some water bottles so I mean in case you want to in case you want to know how many water bottles you can fit I got six water bottles I didn't want to get the whole water bottle um, uh, case 
that I have downstairs from Costco. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and just squeeze as many as I can in there. Oh boy, okay, they keep falling around, don't they? Um, I don't know why I put the caddy there. That's what's causing them to fall over. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep putting them in there. And so that is a total of six water bottles in the uh, fridge section for the cooler. Um, and you can absolutely add more, um, probably if I remove the caddy. And even with the caddy, I can probably add a lot more. Um, and so same thing for the uh, freezer section. You can do a lot. It just depends on what you want to use this for. Um, if you just want it for drinks, this is going to be incredibly perfect for drinks. Um, you know, for food, I did take some food with me. Um, um, but, you know, this isn't the type of uh, cooler that you're going to plug in and immediately just throw food inside and hope for the best. Um, this does need to be cool. I actually had the uh, cooler powered on via my uh, wall outlet and uh, you know I just had it cooling overnight and so um, by morning you know it was already cool inside and I plugged it into the uh, River, 2, River 2 power station once I uh, put it in my car and then I placed the food inside and that's the optimum way to make sure that your food stays good because the cooler does take time to cool. All right, so to get started on some testing, I'm just gonna go ahead and power the uh, cooler on real quick by plugging in the AC adapter to my wall outlet. Um, when it comes to using the um, cigarette lighter port connection, you do have to make sure that it's a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter port. And uh, this and this uh, bodega cooler does have two settings. It's able to, um, you know, use I think about 50 to 60 watts on its max power and it also has an eco option that that pulls about 45 watts my recommendation is always to use the max setting um, to make sure that you get optimal cooling but uh, yeah, just taking a look over this side once you have the cooler plugged in you just got to press the power button I think right over here all right and so the uh, top portion right over here we have the uh, square logo that is the fridge section and right over here um, this uh, Tetris type of uh, logo, that is the freezer section. And you can actually change the temperature in real time um, for each of the sections when you have the divider placed in. And currently it's showing the um, current uh, temperature of either of these sections. Um, and so the uh, fridge section is 76 degrees Fahrenheit and the freezer section is currently 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It's showing the voltage and the battery um, of the uh, cooler as well because this apparently does have an internal battery and right now it's max um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure what causes the battery to go down I'm pretty sure it's just um, general usage over time that causes the battery to deplete in power oh and also right over here there is a Bluetooth logo because this uh, cooler is compatible with an app I'm gonna be showing that as well and so you can actually adjust the um, internal temperature that you want for each of the sections so for for the fridge section uh, generally, I just have it at 35 and for the freezer section, I almost always have it at zero degrees right there. And if you want to, um, once you remove the divider in the middle, this uh, this one right, right over here, it just makes both of them the same thing. So the uh, freezer section actually just turns off. And so basically the entire cooler becomes the refrigerator section. And from there you can adjust the temperature of the entire cooler uh, from the top side. But uh, yeah, there we go. Put the uh, divider back and it automatically knows to divide the fridge and freezer section. And um, just taking a look at the manual as well. There are quite a few settings that are gonna be helpful in case you need them. And so let's take a look over here. So uh, press setting, choose eco energy saving or max fast cooling. Factory setting is max. So I think you can just press settings, just like that. Max, yeah, right over here, as you can see, it's set to max. And we can set it eco if we want to. But you know, once again, max is gonna be the way to go, in my opinion. All right, and so when it comes to the app compatibility, you do, you do have to make sure that the um, cooler is at least plugged in. And as long as it's plugged in, you can remotely power it on. Um, and so right over here, I believe, I think I this is the cooler. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure it is and yeah right over here it's able to show you things real time and it lets you control the cooler uh, remotely you know this is basically just like a um, an app 
that's compatible with a power station. It just lets you, it just lets you control things um, on the phone directly rather than having to interact with the um, cooler directly um, in this case. And uh, so right over here, it shows you the stats in real time, uh, 50, 56 degrees for the left side and 65 degrees for, oh, 64 degrees for the right side, um, just as it says on the screen right over here. And uh, you can actually set the temperature from the um, app as well. So for the left side, we have it set to 35. Let me go ahead and change that to see if it changes on the um, screen. So 27, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna set it back to 35, okay. And uh, right over here for the freezer section, I do have it set to zero. Let me see if I can change that over to the right side. Yep, 16 degrees right there, set it back to zero. And so do you need the app um, to use the cooler? Absolutely not. Um, I think it's just like, you know, a convenience feature, which is just nice to have. Oh, also you change the Celsius and the Fahrenheit settings that I was talking about before. Um, this is a more convenient way to change the uh, temperature scale um, because you actually don't have to change it um, while, while you have the cooler off because you can actually change the Celsius and Fahrenheit settings um, while the cooler is on. So that's actually a pretty convenient feature to have. Um, so that's, that's actually pretty nice. Um, you, you can also change the power mode. So the max and eco mode can be changed in real time via the app. And same thing with the battery protection for your car battery. Um, when, you're, when you are using the cigarette lighter port connection, um, high, medium, low, set it to high right now. L box switch, I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, my bad. Uh, L box switch means that you can turn off the uh, left side of the cooler. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> L box switch. I mean, why? That that would make sense, right? Yeah. I mean, it's to switch off and on the uh, left side of the cooler. Um, as you saw, the left side is now off. I'm going to switch it back on right there, and now it's back on. You can do that uh, via the app as well, rather than directly interacting with. Um, the uh, panel right over here and holding down the plus and minus side you can just uh, flip on and flip off a switch that's a uh, that's a lot that's a lot more convenient than uh, doing the uh, plus and minus thing um, and so yeah once again you can actually turn off the cooler remotely and since the cooler does have a um, internal battery it is technically on right now it's receiving power and so I can turn it on remotely as well if I unplug the cooler from the wall outlet um, I will have to, um, I, I can't, I can't do anything with the app then, of course, because it's not receiving power. Uh, yeah, obviously, why would I even say that? But, um, I'm not too sure what the lock thing is. Um, does that mean I can't change the temperature right now? No, it, it can change the temperature, that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what the lock feature is on the app. All right, you guys, so for testing out the uh, Bodega cooler, I know I, I know I was just testing it out um, a second ago, but to show you guys the cooling and like how it does its cooling full on, uh, I'm gonna be powering the cooler from this uh, Blue Eddy AC180 power station um, until I think the capacity for the power station reaches all the way down to 0%. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get there. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna run the test that long, but um, my goal is to have the cooler reach the desired temperature. And so I'm just going to go ahead and power the uh, Bodega cooler on right over here. And so I have the uh, freezer section set to zero, zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I have the um, refrigerator section uh, set to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And so what I have in the cooler right now is the water bottles. I got five um, water bottles on the refrigerator section. And I have one water bottle on the freezer section. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want to freeze a ton of uh, water bottles and not being and not be able to drink them. But um, and also I have my um, refrigerator and freezer thermometer right over here, and I also have one right over here on the um, freezer side to see if the um, if the uh, temperature is accurate when it's uh, being displayed on the um, screen for the Bodega cooler as well. That is my cat. Um, and I'm just gonna run this test until until we reach the desired temperature to see if the uh, cooler actually performs how it's supposed to. Um, I mean, in my usage, it has when I run when I went on the drive to uh, New York, um, it did cool pretty well, and apparently um, it did show that the internal temperature was um, at the desired temperature. Um, and so I'm just gonna and so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. Um, at this time, it is let's see over here, uh, 3:41. Um, I'll come back at like five o'clock 
Um, so that's going to be about an hour and 20 minutes um, after I've started the test. And just taking a look at the power usage of the cooler right now. Um, I am using it on its max setting right up here, as you can see. So it's usually so it's using about um, you know about 40 watts. Oh, all right. Uh, so just a quick update. It is 3:47, so barely any time has passed. Um, I just want to make note that the um, Bodega cooler is pulling more power right now. It's pulling about 65 watts, um, probably because the cooler is working overtime in order to actually reach the uh, cooling goal. I just wanted to point that out real quick because the runtime of the power station did drop pretty drastically right there. And uh, so yeah, I'll be right back. All right, you guys, so back at 452 and the refrigerator section in the bodega cooler is now 35 degrees. Uh, the freezer section is 31 degrees. So it's gonna take some time for the freezer section to actually reach uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is understandable. I mean, it's a freezer, it's gonna, it's gonna have to um, take longer to get cool. And just taking a look at the Blue Eddy AC180 power station, we are at 90%, uh, started out at 100%. Um, so clearly um, the 16-hour uh, runtime that I had before wasn't, exa wasn't exactly accurate um, because the uh, power usage of the Bodega cooler did go up quite a bit. I'm steady at about 50 watts of uh, constant usage. And uh, yeah, just wanted to give you an update. The refrigerator is now 35 degrees, which is the set temperature. Um, I'm probably gonna have the cooler run overnight to see um, if the freezer is able to get to zero degrees Fahrenheit, um, which it should be able to. Or actually, you know what? I might just come back at like 10 o'clock to see the status of the freezer temperature. All right, you guys, so just back at 1041 uh, with the Bodega cooler. And so I did start this test at about 430, if I'm remembering correctly. And so I've got the, um, the uh, freezer thermometer at about eight degrees Fahrenheit. And I've got the refrigerator thermometer at uh, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, yeah, I'm gonna open it up to see um, what's happening, to see the internal um, thermometer temperatures as well. Um, in terms of the uh, power capacity left on the AC180 power station, um, I'm at 51%. So um, in terms of runtime, you're probably gonna be looking at about maybe 15 hours of runtime. Um, with a 1,152 watt hour capacity, <laughs> if you are using a power station that is. And just opening it up right over here, let's see what's going on. So it looks like this water bottle is completely frozen. Yeah, would you look at that? That is pretty cool. Well, not completely frozen, it's a bit, it's mostly frozen. Yeah, definitely mostly frozen right there. And right over here, these water bottles are not frozen. So that is good, okay, and see, this thermometer is reading about 32 degrees. And right over here, this one is reading about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, I, I mean, preferably it would, should, it would be zero degrees Fahrenheit, but I think it's still working on that. And in order to get the um, actual set uh, temperature that you have it set to, um, I'm pretty sure that's why you have to have the uh, cooler on for about um, 20 hours. Um, to really get that temperature, you know where you want to be, but this is good enough I mean, this is actually like cold enough um, where you can start putting food inside um, Actually, I would say that you could probably get away with having the cooler on for about maybe Two to two to three hours and that's like a good um, place for the cooler to be where you can actually start placing food in um, The freezer section obviously takes a lot of time to get to the set temperature that you want it to be at um, because I have it set to zero degrees and it's not quite there yet, but it's definitely getting there um, I'm pretty sure if I waited, you know 10 hours more um, I know I haven't waited 10 hours yet, but, but, but I'm pretty sure if I waited um, the full 20 hours the freezer section would absolutely be at zero degrees Fahrenheit um, Just like it did um, on my trip and uh, yeah, that's really about it um, to be honest when it comes to the bodega um, 38 quart uh, cooler um, it performs really well. I've been using it for the past month. Um, the wheels are really nice. It makes it easier to move it around on flat ground. I will have a um, link to the product page uh, down in the description below. I will also have a link to the um, review article over at chargerharbor.com in, in case you want to read a review for it. And I will see you all on the next video. All right. Goodbye.